In this video, we are going to look at how to create a project network, but in particular, one that requires the use of dummy activities. Let's first of all start off with a simple table. Here we've got five activities from A through to E, and we'll draw the project based on the predecessors that are available to us. We can see that activity A and B have no predecessors. So we'll start first of all with activity A. That's just a simple line starting from the beginning. And we'll use circles and we'll label these for consistency throughout the video as nodes within the network. So we can see here activity A starting from the beginning. And activity B will be the same. It comes off the beginning because there's no predecessors. So there are our first two tasks done. Our next task to have a look at is activity C. Now that's got two predecessors, A and B. So logically, the lines from A and B will join one node and C will come off that indicating that activity C cannot start until both activity A and B are done. The next task to look at is activity D. Now we have a little bit of a problem because according to the table, activity D starts after activity B. There's no mention of A. So in our diagram at the moment, we've drawn D coming off the same node as activity C. So according to our diagram, activity D is waiting on activities A and B. But according to the table, activity D can start after two days when B is completed. So we may need to reconsider our project network diagram. Here's another option. What we could do is activity D coming off activity B by itself. In other words, there's no link to A. But that creates a problem when we want to draw activity C. So we appear to have a conflict in our diagram and we need to get around that. So we can identify the conflict that's occurring in our table here in the predecessors column. What we've got is a situation where activity C is relying on A and B, but activity D is relying on B only. So what we'll do is we'll go with the lesser of those two so to speak. In other words, activity D is only relying on one predecessor. So we go to activity B, place a node at the end of that particular arrow, and draw D coming off that. So that's task D, requiring three days. So that fits the table. D is requiring B to be completed. That still doesn't solve the issue for task C. So what we do is we put a node at the end of A, and we draw what's called a dummy activity, we'll use a dashed line to indicate that, coming off the end of activity B. And then we'll draw C off that. Now that indicates that C is needing to commence after A and B. So that second arrow, whilst there's no value to it, it's indicating that task C cannot start until B is completed. And that satisfies the requirement from the table for both activity C and activity D. Let's have a look now at how we complete the rest of the diagram based on that idea. The last task to place on our diagram is activity E. Now that requires predecessors of C and D. So what we'll do is we'll bring the arrows together for the two activities C and D, place a node there, and E can come off that. And there's no more activities to be shown in our project network, so that completes the drawing. Now let's have a look at how we find the critical path using the dummy activity in our diagram. So to determine the critical path on our project, we'll start on the very left-hand side node, so the beginning of our project, which will be after zero days. We'll place that number at the top of our circle. Moving left to right, what we can do is see that we've got one arrow coming into the bottom node, and we've got two arrows, one of them coming off B to the node at the top. So we'll start at the bottom here, and we've got only one arrow in, which is uh, activity B, and that takes two days. So the best time to there is two. We've got two lines coming into our node here at the top, and coming through the dummy activity, there's no extra time. So that means that it's still two days to complete that, five days to complete activity A, and because that's the longest time, that's the time it takes before we can start activity C. So moving across the top, we can see that 5 plus 7 is 12. That's the time taken to complete activity C. And then across the bottom, 2 plus 3 is 5. So to complete both of the activities, C and D, so that enables us to uh, start activity E, means we need to put a 12 on that particular node. And then 12 plus 6 is 18 days. 
Now one thing that's always nice to do as you go along is leave a little trail so you can quickly see the critical path. So I'll underline that now. So the best time to complete this project would be 18 days and the critical path is based on activities A, C and E. So let's have a look at this example which is a slightly larger table and we'll look at drawing the project network based on the information given. So the first thing we can see is that we've got activities P and Q which have no predecessors. So they'll form the start of our project network. So I'll draw a node here for the beginning and then we'll put P coming off on the top and Q coming off at the bottom. I won't put any arrows in at this stage because I'm not quite sure where they finish but what I'll do is I'll put P here three days and Q which requires five days. Okay, the next thing we can see is, is that activity R has predecessors P and Q, but activity S only has a predecessor Q. So I'm going to go to activity S first of all, and what I'll do is I will put an arrow at the end of Q and put a node there, and I can draw S coming off that. So we'll do that for the moment and put activity S, which requires four days. Now because activity R has predecessors of P and Q, what we need to do is draw a dummy activity coming off the end of Q and head towards a node where P is completed. So what we're saying there is that it's okay for S to proceed just after activity Q, but what we need to do is indicate that R cannot start till P and Q are done, which is what that dummy activity is doing. So then we'll draw a line coming off there indicating activity R which is six days. Okay moving down the table we see that we've got T coming off R and also U so we'll put a node indicating the end of activity R and we can put T and U coming off that so I'll have T for seven days and activity U there for three days. So that's those two done. Now activity V comes off activity S, so we'll put an arrow at the end of S with a node there indicating that V is coming off that. But also before we draw it, draw it, notice that activity W comes off S and U. So what we'll need to do is we'll first of all activity V off here to the right, so we'll put activity V for 10 days. And W is coming off S and U, so what we need to do is put a, an arrow to the end of U with a node indicating that's completed, but we also need to put a dummy activity in indicating that the next activity on from U and S, which is W, relies on S being completed. Now each of those activities, T, V and W, are not listed in the predecessors column. So that means that that's a completion of the network once those three activities are done. And I need to squeeze a W2 into that particular activity so we know it's all clear. So that's what our project network should look like. And the key thing to note is because we had the conflict with the predecessors with activity V and W, that's where the dummy activity will occur. And likewise for activities P and Q, we can see that the dummy activity will occur coming into R. Okay, let's have a look at a neater version of our project network so we can work out the critical path and the best time to actually complete the project. So we'll start off on the left hand side and we'll work from zero days at our initial node. So moving left to right, we can see here that Q goes into the node at the bottom and also goes into the node at the top. So we'll work from the bottom up in this case. So the best time to the node at the bottom here is five. We've only got one arrow in to check. Now we've got two arrows. Now note, of course, the dummy activity has no time linked to it. So the best time is out of three or five. And to complete both activities, which needs to be done on the project network, we go with a larger time of five. So moving across the top, left to right, we've only got one arrow into the node here. So the time is five plus six, which is 11 days. Across the bottom, we can see we've got 5 plus 4 for S. Again, only one arrow to check. So 5 plus 4 is 9. That's the best time to that stage. Now to the node coming off U, we've got a dummy activity. So we've got two arrows to check. There's no extra time coming from the bottom. So it's still 9 days. But we've got 11 plus 3, which is 14. 
and 14 being the larger total is the one that we go to to make sure that all the activities are completed. We've now got three arrows to check towards the end and so we've got 11 plus 7 is 18 across the top, 14 plus 2 is 16 in the middle and 9 plus 10 is 19 across the bottom. So checking backwards for our critical path, it would be good to keep a trail as we go, but going backwards here we've got 10, and it took S and Q to get to the same stage across the bottom. So our critical path is Q, S and V, and the best time to complete it is 19 days. Let's have a look now at a couple of follow-up questions. In this case we're basing it on changes to activities, and what impact that has on the overall completion time and critical path. In the first question we're delaying activity W by four days and seeing what that effect that has on the completion time and critical path. And in the second question we're simply asked what effects there are by changing activities Q and U such that they're shortened by two days. We have to make a decision on the basis of which is best for the network. We can see the network displayed here with all the times that lead to the critical path and minimum completion time and we're looking at activity W in this case and seeing what happens if we delay this task by four days. The first thing we'll do is we'll go down to our network and where W has got two from a previous problem we'll change this to six because we've added four days. So following on from the 14 that means that we've got 14 plus 6 is 20 days to complete this task and that means that our new completion time is 20. We can track back all the activities that lead to this total of 20 because this is going to become our new critical path. So we can see our new critical path is P, R, U and W. Now this has created a time which is one extra than the previous total. So our new minimum completion time is 20 days. In this question we're looking at two activities and deciding what choice we'd make if either of them were shortened. The two activities in question are Q and U. So what we'll do in the first instance, we'll have a look at task Q and we'll shorten that by two days, so that becomes now a total of three. Following on from there, that will adjust the totals in the nodes, so five now becomes three in that bottom left-hand node, and following up from where the dummy activity is, this now becomes three. Extending that to the right after activity R, we can see that total now is nine. Likewise, in the bottom after activity S, that now becomes seven. The node following on from activity U is now 12 and that's going to change the values on the right hand activities too. So adding 7 for T onto 9 that makes the total 16, adding 2 for W onto 12 makes it 14 and adding the 10 from V onto 7 makes it 17. So now our completion time is reduced by 2 as well and that becomes a total of 17. So the effect of shortening Q by two days will change the completion time to 17. Let's have a look now what happens with activity U. Reducing U by two means that that total now is just one day. So the total at that node there will drop to 12 if we add one on to 11. Now that's only going to affect one pathway to the concluding node and that's after the W, so 2 plus 12 becomes 14. But following on from the T and the V, the totals are unchanged, and a minimum completion time is still 19 days. So it does appear that by changing Q, we do shorten our completion time. So for the benefit of the overall project, it's better to choose the change in Q, which improves the completion time.